Okay, I don't know if I can do all this in, a vi in one video, but I got to shoot this down. I'm so sick of people who are so stupid about scripture. You cannot lose your salvation. End of story. Now I'm going to show you a bunch of ver verses here. And when somebody comes to you and says, Oh, you can lose your salvation. Or you have to do something besides believe Christ paid for your sins to be saved. Send them to me. Just refer them to me. Okay? You cannot lose your salvation primarily because you belong to Christ. The minute you believed in him that he paid for your sins. That's all you have to do. You don't have to understand it. You just have to believe it. The minute you did that, you became his property. Now there are a bazillion verses on this in the Bible, like in Christ. Ever heard of that phrase? It's all over the New Testament. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. 2 uh, Corinthians 5.21 Well, if you're new and you're in Christ, how are you going to get out? You're his property. I buy a couch. It's mine. The couch cannot do anything to stop being my couch. I can do something to it. But now look at the left-hand side of the screen. You see highlighted in red there? He cannot deny himself. The couch, if I buy it, is part of me. I am the only one who has the power to get rid of my property. Got that? That's not the only, there's like 40 different reasons why you can't lose your salvation, but this is the fundamental one. Look at the left-hand side. It's 2 Timothy 2, 12 and 13. It was a, a psalm that they were singing at the time Paul was writing. That's why he quotes it. People made up a little song about the fact that you can't lose your salvation. They made up a little song about what the spiritual life really is post-salvation. So let's go through it a little bit, and then I'm going to go through some other verses, and hopefully my video recorder won't tank if we died with him that's 2,000 years ago on the cross before we existed we will also live with him yeah in other words it happened 2,000 years ago before you were born and since he was resurrected so will you be that's one of the 40 reasons why you can't lose your salvation now look this is post-salvation. If we endure, that means keep the faith, we will also reign with him. That's not the same as being saved. That's kingship. 2 Timothy 4, 7, and 8. Because Paul's leading up to that in this chapter of 2 Timothy. Right now we're in 2 Timothy 2, 12. If we endure, we will also reign with him. In other words, Paul's going to be telling Timothy later in the letter that he's getting a crown because he endured to the end. Okay? Kingship is what you can lose. You cannot lose your salvation. But you can lose the crown that's laid up for you from eternity past. That's in Revelation 1 through 3. It's also in Peter, which is on the right, but I don't have time to cover all the verses. There's like a thousand verses on this. If we endure, meaning you keep the faith, you keep growing in Christ, you keep learning and living on Bible and God's system, you keep using 1 John 1, 9, you keep studying under whomever God appointed as your teacher. See my God system video. Those are the only mechanics you got to follow for the rest of your life. And they don't cost any money. They cost all of your time. Then you become a king and you reign with him. That's not salvation, that's kingship. Reign is not salvation. Reign is on top of salvation, 1 Corinthians 3. If we deny him, refuse. It means to refuse or to repudiate. Now watch this. He will also deny us. Deny us what? The reigning 
Because, see, it's in the same sentence. Hello? If we endure, what's the opposite of endure? To deny, to repudiate, to reject. That's what this word means in Greek. See? Endure, on the one hand, versus deny, on the other. And it's all in the same sentence with what? Reign with him. It's not talking about something else. It's in the same sentence. If we deny him, then he will deny us. Deny us what? The reigning, the crown. You'll be in the kingdom, but you won't be a ruler in the kingdom. You see the difference? Let's do that one more time. If we endure, meaning endure to the end, it's a catchphrase. The, the full phrase is endure to the end. It's in other parts of the Bible. We will also reign with him. That's on top of salvation. So you can be in a kingdom or a ruler of a kingdom. But if we repudiate him, that's more correct to the Greek than deny, then he will also deny us, repudiate us. Repudiate us in what way? Reigning. Because it's in the same sentence. You see that. We're not talking salvation. We're talking kingship. He will deny us the kingship that was our inheritance. Okay? If we are faithless, watch, he remains faithful. In other words, you can say tomorrow, I don't want you, Christ. That doesn't change his faithfulness. You get that? If we are faithless, and you don't know, define that any way you want. He remains faithful. So your faithlessness can't cancel his faithfulness. You get that, right? Here's why. For he cannot deny himself. Well, what is that? Why does that mean that? Well, because you're his property. And now we're going to see it's mistranslated, but I'm going to fix it. Okay? Isaiah 53, 12. I'm going to just fix the translation. I've already done this in my Isaiah 53 exegesis playlist. This is this is completely wrong, this translation. It's, uh, it's, it's, he, it's, therefore, I will give him, I will give him the people. See how bad this is? The actual translation should read, therefore, I will give him the people. And he will divide the booty with the strong. In other words, this whole part of it's wrong. It's not divide a portion with the great. I will give him the people is how that should be translated. Okay? Let me show it to you in the Hebrew. Just real quick. Okay? Laken, therefore. Yahalek. Shal Yahalek. Shala. Yeah. Ahalek. Yeah. Lakin ahalek. That means I will give. I will share out. Okay? Lakin, therefore. Ahalek. Lo. I will give to him. Let's do that again. Because, you know, sometimes learning a little bit of Hebrew is real important. Lakin, therefore. Ahalek lo. I will give to him. Lo means him. Ahalek lo. Ahalek lo. I will give to him. And what is he going to get? Ba rabin. The people. Ba rabin. The people. You use ba when it's the object of a gift. See? This is God the Father talking. Laken. Therefore. Ahalek lo. I will share out to him. Lo. Barabim, the people. What? Atsumim, and to the strong, Yahalek, he will share out Shalal. Now, remember when I showed you reign with him in 2 Timothy? 2 Timothy 2? Did I kill that window? No, I didn't. See? Reign with him. See that? Paul is talking back to Isaiah right here. 
Reign with him is coming from this. Yahalik Shalav. Yahalik means he will share out. Shalal, the booty. What booty? Barabim, the people. You are property of Christ. And then he turns around and shares you out to whoever is going to be the kings. See, the English is so mistranslated, you miss this. You're the property of Christ. So I'm sorry, my couch can't do anything but be my property. I can do something with it if I want, but it can't do anything to stop being my couch. You can't do anything to stop being the property of Christ. Sorry. Why? La ken. Therefore, achalek lo, I will give to him barabim, the people. Wetatsumim, and to the strong, to the mighty, to the kings, yahalek, he will share out shalal, the booty. And who is the booty? Barabim, the people. So you're either going to be a king or you're going to be people booty under Christ, belonging to Christ, that he gives to some other king. That's it. You don't have a choice. It's too late. You believed in Christ for your salvation. Honey, you're his slave forever, whether you like it or not. Okay? Period. And then in the rest of Isaiah 50 through 12, it explains why. Because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, and he himself bore the sin of the many and interceded for the transgressors. That translation is kind of off, but it's close enough. Can you see the difference between the left-hand side and the right-hand side? Because he paid. Who did he pay for? You. So what do you become? His property. And what is he going to do with you? Well, God the Father says so right here. La ken, therefore, ahalek lo, I will share, give to him, barabim, the people. Wetat sumim, and to the strong, meaning the kings on the right hand side, highlighted in blue. Yahalek, he will share out as booty, the booty, shalal. And who are the shalal, the booty? Barabim, the people. You are people booty. You are the booty of Christ. He owns you. And he can do with you what he wants. And so what is he going to do? Well, if you don't learn and live on Bible and get a king-sized soul that's like his by learning and living on Bible, because he became the truth, so you do too. Yahalek, he will share out. Shalal, you as people booty, because people is what? Barabim. That's definitive right there. I wouldn't even need to show you another Bible verse. You're his property. You don't have a say in whether or not you're saved after you're saved. Sorry. Now, is Brain Out just making this up? Is this just Brain Out's interpretation? Well, no, because you got the Hebrew text right there telling you the same thing. I didn't write that text. I'm not Isaiah. I didn't live in 712 B.C. when he wrote that. He tells you when he writes his book in, in the Hebrew also. That's a long story. Well, is that the only verse in the Bible? Hell no. Sorry to be so caustic, but I am sick of all this false doctrine. Okay? Look at this. Look at this. Reserved in heaven for you. So now let's compare Peter to Timothy, which was written beforehand. Timothy was written just before Paul died. Peter was written just before Peter died. Reserved in heaven for you. An inheritance. Okay, now let's look back at Isaiah. See? What is this? La Ken. Therefore, ahalek lo, I will give to him an inheritance, which is what? Barabim, the people. Wetatsumim, to the kings. Yahalek, he will share out. Shalal, the booty. And what is the booty? Barabim, 
It's his property to give out. Now here's the irony of it. When I bought my couch, it became my property. My couch has absolutely no say whatsoever in the fact that it's my property. It cannot change its mind and not be my property. It didn't have any right to change its mind and be my property or not be my property. I own it. Once you believed in Christ, you don't have the right to change your mind anymore. Even if you change your mind, it does no good. Because why? Oh, because he cannot deny himself. Oh, honest to Pete, the people who think you can lose your salvation, they can't read Bible. And oh, hi, this is even in translation. And a lot of things in Peter are mistranslated, but not this. See, you are born again. You can't be unborn once you're born again, okay? You can't go back into your mother's womb to a living hope, not a living hope that you can lose through the what? Resurrection of Christ from the dead, not your works. Hello, through the resurrection of Christ from the dead, you are born again to a living hope. Does it? Is there any texture that says, well, see, you can do something really nasty and bad and therefore lose it. No, because you are born again due to what? The resurrection of Christ from the dead. It's his victory that makes you his property. My couch, I bought it. It couldn't have anything to do with. It couldn't pay for itself. I had to buy it. And if the couch had a will and said, yes, please buy me, and I bought it, the couch still doesn't have any money to purchase itself away from me now, does it? Even so, you don't have the right, the ability, or anything you can do can make you stop being Christ's property. And what's the result? To obtain an inheritance, which is what? Imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away. What? Reserved in heaven for you. If there was any chance you could lose your salvation, would these words be in the Bible? And that's just two of thousands of verses I could show you. From Genesis 15, 6 in the Old Testament all the way forward. Now, I'm sorry this turned into something of a rant. But if anybody sits there and tells you you can lose their sal your salvation, point them at this video, okay? And then sick them, you know, send them to me. And I'll give them what for. Peace out.